So in this video, I'm going to talk about the other aspect of our singing instrument, and that is the vocal tract. So we've already talked about how the vocal folds vibrating will produce sounds, and you have control over the frequencies of those sounds using the muscles inside and around your vocal folds. So those sounds consist of a fundamental frequency as well as a whole bunch of harmonics. And those are fed into the vocal tract, which is like the cavity of the instrument. And so the thing that happens there is that certain harmonics will become enhanced and other harmonics will become dampened a little bit. So it kind of shapes the sound that eventually comes out of our mouth when we're singing. So I want to emphasize that the vocal tract does not behave like the inside of a trumpet or a flute or a saxophone where you have these very specific frequencies that the air wants to naturally vibrate at. Uh, the vocal tract can support oscillations of air at a broad range of frequencies. So it's actually a little bit more like the body and cavity of a violin. Uh, the job of the vocal tract is just to enhance the sound of the, the sound that's produced by the vocal folds. So just like the strings of a violin oscillate and then that oscillation is driving the oscillation of the body and the cavity of a violin and enhancing the sound, that's basically the same role that the vocal tract is playing. Okay, so what we could do is describe for various frequencies, how much the air in the vocal tract wants to vibrate at that frequency. So we could maybe imagine sending in some sound at a broad range of frequencies, all with the same amplitude. And then we could look at what is the sound that comes out, how much amplitude you have at the various frequencies. Okay, so if you do that, let me sh actually show you that in the case of a trumpet. So if I take a trumpet like this one and if I just like, tap on the end of the trumpet like that, so I'm just sending in some noise into one end of the trumpet and then I measure the sound coming out. That's what I did in this spectrum here. So I, I recorded that in Audacity. I plotted the spectrum and then you see the there are these very specific frequencies of sound that would naturally want to vibrate in the trumpet. And so in order to produce a significant sound in the trumpet, what you need to do is match the frequency of vibration of your lips to one of these frequencies. And in that way, you produce the various sounds of the trumpet, the various harmonics associated with a particular length of tube. Okay. So I wanna contrast that with this picture of the frequencies in your vocal tract. Okay, so you notice that while there are a few different peaks, uh, they're relatively broad, and the valleys between the peaks are much higher. There, there is much less of a difference between the peaks and the valleys here in your vocal tract than in the trumpet or a cylindrical tube like the clarinet or the flute. So these broad peaks are known as formants. And so those are just regions of frequency space uh, that would naturally have a larger amplitude when you have sound inside your vocal tract. And one thing to notice about these is that generally they are at higher frequencies than the frequencies of the notes that you're singing. So the fundamental frequency of the note that the typical notes people sing would be down in this range. And so the peaks in your vocal tract are going to line up with some harmonics of the notes rather than the fundamental frequencies. Okay, so it's not like the trumpet where your vibration frequency of your lips locks onto a peak. Here, these peaks are going to be basically just affecting which combination of higher harmonics are going to be present in the sound that you sing. So we can kind of understand this production of the final sound as being a combination of this sound that's being produced by the vocal folds 
Okay, and so that would have a fundamental frequency and then many higher harmonics. And then that gets processed by the vocal tract. So that sound goes into the vocal tract. Some of these frequencies are more resonant inside the vocal tract and therefore lead to a larger amplitude of oscillation. And so in the final resulting sound spectrum, you see harmonics with a higher amplitude at the frequencies that you have these formants. Okay, so the formants again are the regions of frequency that have a peak when you plot this spectrum. So here's the sound produced by the vocal folds. These are the natural resonant frequencies of your vocal tract. And then the combination of these things gives the final sound that is coming out of your mouth when you're singing. So here's where it gets interesting and where the human voice is very different from most other instruments. So with the human voice, you have a lot of control over the shape and the size of your vocal tract. So you can control the cavity and that has the effect of changing which frequencies are most pronounced in vibration in your vocal tract. So you can change the formats by changing the shape of your mouth. So I want you to try this, just sing a note and vocalize that as the vowel ah, and then try ooh, and then try e. So the same note, but just sounding different by making different vowel sounds. Ah, ooh, e, ooh, ah. Okay, so those are significantly different sounds. From a music point of view, those are the same note with different timbres, okay? And so, um, so what we learned was that those are going to correspond to the same fundamental frequency, but a different combination of the higher harmonics. So this is a sketch or a picture from the textbook showing how you're altering your vocal tract in these three different situations for these three different vowels and also sketching the spectrum of oscillations inside your vocal tract so the format spectrum and you see it's very different between these three different vowels and so when you send in oscillations from your vocal folds into the vocal tract the resulting sound is going to be quite a bit different depending on which of those vowels that you're trying to vocalize. And these pictures of the sound wave, so these are the time graphs, show that the time graphs are clearly very different and the, the spectrum graphs would, would again be quite different depending on which of those that you're singing. Okay. So this is one reason why we might adjust the shape of our vocal tract we might want to be saying different vowels during our singing, but we can also adjust the shape and size of our vocal tract in order to make the notes sound different or say emphasize different harmonics of the notes. Okay, so maybe we're singing a particular note and maybe that fundamental frequency is below all of the formats of our vocal tract but we might be able to adjust the shape or size of our vocal tract so that one of the peaks lines up with a harmonic of the note that we're trying to sing. And then that might mean that the note would come out being louder or more resonant. So this is particularly true when you have sopranos singing in their upper range, because there it's actually possible to adjust the vocal tract so that the first four month frequency lines up with the fundamental frequency of the note that they're singing. And in doing that, they get a very resonant tone. So when they are singing then different notes in that range, they're adjusting the oscillations of their vocal folds at the same time as they're adjusting the shape of their vocal tract. And this is how they can produce extremely resonant, um, loud, singing in this high range. Well, there's one more very interesting thing that I wanted to mention that you could, that not everyone, few people can do with their vocal tract. 
Um, and so that is to adjust the vocal tract in such a way that you get a very highly peaked formant that lines up with one of the higher overtones, one of the higher harmonics corresponding to a note that you might be singing. Okay, so I've kind of indicated that here where this is again the sound produced by the vocal folds and this graph is showing the formats in a particular situation where we've managed to get a big peak here around a little less than 2000 hertz in this graph. So combining the left graph with the right graph, the final sound that you would produce is this one where there's one particular harmonic that is very much emphasized relative to the other ones. And so presented with a sound like this, with this particular spectrum, your brain is likely to perceive that particular frequency as a separate tone on top of the other fundamental frequency that you're singing. So probably most of these harmonics would be combined by your brain into one note that you'd hear with a pitch equal to uh, determined by that fundamental frequency. But that particular harmonic there, because its amplitude is so high, your brain actually singles it out and thinks that it's actually a separate note on top. Okay. And so this is demonstrated in a video that maybe you've seen already. Uh, sorry, let me grab the grab the link for that here. Okay, uh, so this is a, a singer demonstrating exactly this, where it actually sounds like she's singing a very high note on top of. Obviously, you would probably need to be very highly trained in order to do that, uh, but it's, it's kind of amazing the, the versatility of the human voice and all of the different things that we can do with it.